Wolfpack, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where today I am out for a survival overnight adventure. Last year, I did an episode of survival with this, which involved in an emergency shelter, which I took out and tested it to see how good of an emergency shelter it really was. And today with this episode, I'm doing the same thing, but with a different shelter. With this scenario, I'm a day hiker. Things go wrong and I don't make it to my truck tonight. I have to stay out in the forest. Now luckily, I brought with me a day pack, I have some supplies, and I also have an emergency shelter, which you can easily and inexpensively purchase on Amazon. Talking about my supplies here for a second, they are very much typical of what a day hiker would have with them. And that includes clothing. As you can see, I'm wearing shorts, I have a t-shirt, I have a fleece jacket in my backpack. I have a little bit of food, some water, my miscellaneous kit, and of course, I had the survival shelter. And that's pretty much it for this trip. I will show you all everything in more detail later on. But for now, I'm hiking. Whoa, there's a little snake on the ground. Hello, little snake. <laughs> that's a little garter snake. Your time is almost up, my friend. It is just about too cold for you all. Anyways, when it comes to survival shelters, there are a ton of these products out on the market. And the thing is, very few of them have actually been thoroughly tested, tested in real world conditions. With this series, I aim to change that. I aim to take these products out, do real world testing, and share with you all my findings. What works, what doesn't work, what's realistic, what's not, and what is pure marketing BS. For this trip, I have a product from Adventure Supply Company, and it is a Mylar tent and also a Mylar bivy. This is a combo kit that runs about $23. My question for you all is this. Do you know how Mylar works? This is a product that has been around for a long time and it is a product that has a lot of marketing BS behind it. Every year, millions of dollars worth of Mylar blankets, Mylar products are sold. And unfortunately, a lot of people think or they believe that this is some sort of magic material that is going to save their lives. The thing is, it can save your life, but only in very specific situations. All in all, Mylar really is an interesting product, but just as it could be beneficial, it can also be deadly if used incorrectly. Oftentimes, with these emergency shelters, they are designed in such a way that can actually cause more harm than good. It's all about the properties of the material. Waterproof, reflective, non-insulating, non-breathable. You take those aspects and put them together, and it could be beneficial or it could be deadly. Just in case you're not familiar with Mylar and how it came about, many people refer to it as a space blanket or space material, and they think it was made by NASA. That's not the case. The product was developed in the 50s by DuPont, but it has been used on the space shuttle. In general, it's a very simple product. Essentially, it's a piece of plastic that has a piece of aluminum foil on the backside. It works in one of two ways. It reflects heat back towards the source, or it could be used to reflect heat away from. Again, it is not an insulating layer. All it does is reflect, that's it. You could read all about Mylar on the NASA website, in fact. They used it in such a way that it reflects heat into outer space so that Skylab doesn't overheat. I will go ahead and give you another example of when Mylar is beneficial and when it's not. So let's say that you're a marathon runner. You get done with your run, they give you a Mylar blanket. That is so you don't cool down too fast. You need to reflect back some of your body heat and that stabilizes their temperature. So you can see in that example, Mylar is a good thing. But let's take another example. Let's say that you're out for a hike, right? You didn't bring the right type of clothing with you. It starts snowing, you get cold and wet, and you're right on the line of having hypothermia. Search and rescue comes, they are not going to give you a Mylar blanket, or they shouldn't give you one. You may be wondering, why is that? 
This is why. When you are hypothermic or close to it, your body is not producing much heat. And that is why you have hypothermia. You're not as hot as you normally would be. That would make the product almost worthless. There's a little bit more to it than just that when it comes to how Mylar works with the human body. And I will talk about that later on tonight. tell you what everyone this is an amazing place this is white top mountain here in virginia the second highest peak now for this trip i am hiking off the mountain and basically i'm going to hike until it gets dark then i will set up my shelter 99 percent of the time when it comes to an emergency shelter you don't plan to use it you use it when you have to there's a huge difference it really is the difference between like marketing gimmicks and real life Ultimately, for this episode, it doesn't matter the reason why I can't make it back to the vehicle tonight. That's not important. What is, is that I simply can't. And I have this emergency shelter system to use. If you all remember in the previous survival episode, I had the pocket super shelter, which worked great if you had the time to stop, to plan, to gather firewood for hours and hours. Otherwise, the shelter wasn't a good shelter. Not really. With this trip, I want it to be as realistic as possible, as close to a real scenario as possible. The low tonight is supposed to be around 42 degrees. That's pretty chilly. Tell you what though, I love it. Beautiful conditions. <laughs> Even though tonight I am going to suffer. Yes, I have spent many nights with different types of mylar shelters and bivvies and whatnot. I know how they perform, but it's funny. I receive emails from people all the time and they ask me to take a look at their gear list. You know, talk about the pros, cons, maybe suggest something better. Oftentimes I see these mylar products and I always ask them, now why do you have that? What is your plan? How do you plan to use it? And most of the time, with most people, oh, it's for emergencies, if I get wet or whatever, if I get really cold, I can wrap up in it. If you are cold, if you are wet, you need an insulation layer. You don't need mylar. Figured I would stop for a second, have some water. I'll tell ya, this is beautiful. The forest with the leaves changing, it is gorgeous. There is red, yellow, orange, pink, some green left, yellow of course. It is amazing, it really is.
where I'm at. It's basically out in the middle of nowhere. There's no houses around here. There's absolutely nothing. As an update, there's about 15 minutes of light left. Still heading down. With this trip, I am walking at a pace that I would typically walk. I'm sweating like I would typically sweat for a day hike. And that's because this has to be as authentic as possible. Even though I'm putting myself in this situation, it is still a situation. There are real risks involved. Growing up, going outside to camp, I mean, my brother and I, we didn't have any tents or tarps or anything like that. We would just use plastic and garbage that we could find around the house. We were constantly waking up cold, freezing cold. And it's because of that that I have learned ways to stay warm. They're not necessarily fun ways. I will survive. Those were some good times. Now, talking about my brother, Ira. I love you, pal. Iraq. That's what we call them sometimes. <laughs> or Iratron, or Trailblazer, or Power Plant. He has all sorts of nicknames. He's doing good. He's doing good. He has himself a new girlfriend. He just recently got divorced. He's a happy camper. And that is awesome. Way to go, brother. Everybody deserves to be happy. The golden hour is upon us, everyone. It's the most beautiful time of the day next to the sunrise. In this scenario, it's about this time where the individual realizes, hey, I'm pretty far from the vehicle and it's getting late. So let's think logically about what the individual does. They don't stop and gather firewood. They keep going. That is a realistic response. That is what people do. Unfortunately, that does not translate well for emergency shelters. If you don't plan to use them, most of the time, they don't work that well. And that's the case with the pocket super shelter. That's the case when it comes to Mylar as well. With that being said, I'm going to continue to hike on. Once it gets dark, I'll stop and begin the setup process. It's gorgeous. Check that out. As for an update everyone, I continue to go on the trail just as anyone would. So I'm going to hike a little bit longer, see if I can find a good spot to camp at, because I'm at the point now where I realize, hey, I'm not making it back to the vehicle tonight. In this scenario, that is. Now it's kind of funny, there are deer everywhere, tons of them. I've been walking past like two at a time. I think so far I've seen like eight. <laughs> That's a good thing, really. That means that there's not many bear in this area right now. So, okay, well, going to continue walking. Let's do this, folks. I have hiked to the point where logically I should not hike any further. So I'm going to stop here. 
I'm a little bit off the trail. Nothing around here is flat except for this. I have found this spot underneath a tree limb. There is a pretty good breeze blowing through the forest here, so I'm going to set up the tent basically away from that breeze. That way the air isn't going inside of the tent. I can stay just a little bit warmer. So I'm going to stop talking for a little bit, set up the tent. Let's see how this goes, everyone. These are the shelters. This is the sleeping bag, Bivy, and this is the tent. You pull this out and you will never get this back in there again. <laughs> that is a certainty. So we have some cordage and we have the tent. Already, folks, I could tell you that I do not like this product. The Amazon listing and even the packaging states that this is a tent, but in truth, it's not really. Both sides are completely open. So what it is is basically an open-ended bag. It's honestly a very weird setup. It includes some cordage, but there's no tie-off places, which is very interesting. Okay, I am going to mess around and come up with a way to set this up. So I'll bring you all back when I'm done. I have the shelter set up and I have to say that this thing has some serious problems. This is, in my opinion, a very poor survival tent. It's not a tent at all, really. It's just a, a bag. The fact that it's open-ended on both sides is a problem. But uh, this is the setup that I've come up with. I have this side sealed with rocks. And it's tied up here. I just used a piece of wood to tie that up. I have a couple of rocks down here at the bottom to pull the fabric, the material apart. And that right there is the shelter. Now, since I'm inside of the shelter, we might as well go over all of the gear that I have with me so you all know what I have to work with. So, I have this bottle of water, or what is left of it. That is it. I have this bag right here, which is nothing but camera batteries, ND filter, uh, lens cleaning stuff, that's it. I have this, this is my miscellaneous kit. And I will show you all what is in it. This is a piece of bubble wrap, piece of plastic, this is to sit on. Just in case there's like a wet log or something like that. Toilet paper. I have some band-aids, toothbrush, toothpaste. I keep this in my miscellaneous kit always. It's always in there. I have a first aid kit and it has the typical stuff in it. Some sunblock chapstick, ointments, fingernail clippers, painkiller. I have some clotting agent just in case I need it. I have the visine inside of my miscellaneous kit from my out west trip in Colorado. I do have some cordage and I always have some cordage with me. I have a tick removal tool. I have some water treatment drops. That's what is inside of my miscellaneous kit. I think I mentioned it before, but I have my jacket and I have these snacks. That is what I have to eat right there. 
This is the emergency sleeping bag. So we will check that out in just a little bit. When it comes to this Mylar material, I have to say that it is working very well right now. And it should, because I'm hot. I've been hiking, I'm warm, and that means that I am releasing, I'm radiating quite a bit of heat. Companies that make emergency shelters for Mylar will claim that it will reflect back roughly 80 to 90% radiant heat. While that's true, the human body only loses roughly 50% of its heat through radiation. So consider those figures. You have 80% of the 50% that you're releasing, which is roughly 40%. So those claims don't really translate to much. And that's what you have to keep in mind. If I was able to start a fire, it would in fact reflect 80 to 90 percent of the heat. But we're talking about the human body here. And that's where the problems come when it comes to products like this. To use them to the fullest potential, to use them to the marketed claims, you really have to plan ahead. And that's just not realistic. You prepare for an emergency, but you don't plan for one. So with all that I've mentioned when it comes to Mylar, there are a few things more that you have to consider. As you're inside of a shelter made of mylar or the bivy, it is not breathable. So the only airflow is the door or whatever it is that you have open. If you're inside of the bivy, it's only that neck hole. Because it's not breathable means that it will condensate. So you have to be really, really careful. You have to use a bivy for a right amount of time and at the right time, because if you don't, this is what will happen. You'll put it on, you'll warm up, it will condensate, and then you will get wet and it will cool you down. Being cold is one thing, but being wet and cold could be a death sentence, so you really have to be careful. With the shelter here, I will keep my head towards the opening to try to prevent condensation as much as possible. Being wet would really make this a bad situation, even now. Temperatures right now, mm, around 50 degrees, maybe something like that. It's cold enough to see your breath outside. And when I stopped, took off my backpack, you can actually see steam rising off of me. But as it stands though, I'm comfortable in here. I have the airflow coming through the door. And yes, I could seal this up, but I don't want to. Again, I'd rather be cold than being cold and wet. Something else to keep in mind with Mylar, let's say that there was snow on the ground and I had this shelter, I set it up, I crawled inside. Because there's no insulation here, all of that cold would come up through the material and I would get cold. It would limit the performance of this shelter. Anytime that you're using a Mylar product, you need to think about what is underneath you. What is going to protect you from the cold ground? Because the cold will seep up. Now in this case, we have all the fallen leaves out there so I do have some natural insulation underneath me. If there was snow on the ground, I would have to do something about it. I would have to find some insulation. Update everyone. I am actually laying towards the closed end and that's because I'm getting somewhat cold to be honest. I mean, I have my jacket, I'm about to put it on. I may even get the uh, bivy sleeping bag thing out and uh, put that on, see how it performs. The thing is about Mylar, is that it really has to be close to your skin for the reflection to work well. If you have a big open space, there's too much distance between your body and the material itself. It's just an aspect to what this material is capable of. All in all, I have to say that I'm having a good time. But the thing is, I'm filming a video, I was able to plan for this. When you're in an emergency situation and you're not planning for it, things are different. You have a different mindset things weigh on you differently. While the situation is virtually the same where I went out, didn't make it back to the vehicle in time or whatever, my mindset is different. And that's really important to keep in mind. Hopefully you'll never be in a situation where you have to use something like this. But if you do, if it happens, remember more than anything, it's about your mindset. You have to think clearly. By focusing on the good, it will help you through the night. I mean, for an example, just think that, hey, all you have to do is make it through the night and the next day you'll be able to make it. Or if the situation's different, if there's another reason why you didn't make it back to your vehicle, think about what you have going for you. Plan, think about the gear that you have with you. Don't waste resources, that's important. With this scenario, I know that I'll be back at the vehicle tomorrow so I can eat my food, right? 
I ate one bar already. I have the nuts and I will save those for later on tonight and I'll eat them slowly over the course of the night. That way I have something to digest and that heat inside of your stomach, the breaking down process will keep me warmer. If you cannot find any sort of insulation to put underneath you, don't lay down. If the ground is cold, sit up and stay that way all night long. That's what you would have to do. Luckily, I have quite a bit of insulation here, so yeah, I'm not having any issues as far as that goes. But uh, <sighs> I am getting tired. I might try to get some sleep here in just a little bit. Before I turn in though, I will get the sleeping bag bivy thing and get inside of it. I'm going to just rest a little bit. I'll bring you all back when I decide to get the sleeping bag out. This is going to be one uncomfortable night. <laughs> I'll use my water bottle as a pillow. All right, everyone. It is time for the bivy. And also, I need to switch positions here. It's starting to get a little bit damp. Here's the bivy. I don't know which way <laughs> opens this thing up. It smells like a chemical factory in there. Already I could just feel like the moisture getting trapped inside of it. There is no built-in vents or anything like that in the bottom. And that means this will condensate soon. So I've switched sides. I'm pretty much ready to call it a night for now. I will try to get some sleep. I'll um, set a timer on my phone for about an hour. That way I can wake up and see how much condensation is inside of this and do what I need to do. So. <sighs> Good night for now. I'll bring you all back in about an hour. We'll see how I am. Bye everybody. All right, everyone, as you can see, it's update time. I've been inside this bivy for about 40 minutes. The backside here has dried, so I switched over, but I will have to get out of this bivy. It's one of those things where it is keeping me warm, but right now I'm at the point where I'm about to get wet. In fact, my, my legs are damp. And that is the problem with products like this. Again, everyone, it's better to be cold than wet and cold. So I am hopping out of this before it becomes a problem. I just pulled my legs out of the bivy and yeah, I'm damp. And that is cooling me down. As it stands right now, I will go without this. I'll pull up my socks as high as they will go. And if I get really cold, I will start doing some push-ups. I'll start moving around, create some heat. That's what you have to do to survive. So let's go over a few points. Am I comfortable? Not especially. Um, it's not the most uncomfortable place I've ever slept, but no, it's not very comfortable. Am I cold? A little bit, but not terribly so. Sleeping inside of this bivy would be a huge mistake. Uh, the tent is doing okay, actually. Condensation does form, so I have to switch sides ever so often, but uh, that's not a huge problem, not really. As long as you switch and don't allow condensation to form, you'll be all right. In the end though, I don't like this product. It's uh, pretty poor in my opinion. <sighs> all right, everyone. Good night for me. Bye.
Not gonna lie, folks. Last night was uncomfortable. The ground's uncomfortable. It's cold. And in truth, Mylar makes for a poor survival shelter. Condensation has been a real issue. I've had to basically just stay up all night long, just move around ever so often. Um, it made getting rest very difficult. And I'll talk more about this and the other issues that I've had later on. But um, the sun's coming up. I'll be getting up soon. It's time to get walking. I'm ready to warm up. That's for sure. There's only so many push-ups one can do throughout the course of the night. I did a couple hundred. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to do any more push-ups. Yeah. So, I'll be getting up here in just a minute. Alright everyone, it is time to get up, time to get out. We have some hiking to do. I have successfully made it through the night. <laughs> Thank God. Without a doubt, the shelter protected me. It protected me from the wind, and it also kept me a little bit warmer. Now, the truth is, the design is bad. This is worthless. What I did was basically just cut a line all the way down to the bottom and just draped it over me like a blanket. That worked much better than the bivy. Uh, let's see. This fabric, this mylar, is very fragile. There are some gigantic holes in this thing already. Like this here, that is a pretty good size hole. And that is another con to this material. I wrote down some thoughts about these products in the middle of the night. So when it comes to the tent, it should be sealed on one side. It comes with some rope, but no tie-off points. With the design here, it is meant to have the guy line or the line run through the center of the body and tied to two points. But you're not always going to find a setup like that. Also, there's no stakeout points. Limited setup options. Very limited number of uses. Next, my friends, there is zero bug protection with this setup. I had spiders coming inside of the tent, and I don't like that. Bug protection needs to be considered, especially when you're in an area that has venomous spiders or maybe lots of mosquitoes. At certain points in time during the year, certain locations, this would not be a good survival option. Next, we have to talk about the limited warmth. This is good down to about 50 degrees, and that applies for this tent, and it applies for that. Of course, you can use this for a shelter, and it works somewhat. I am sure that there are better Mylar shelters out on the market, and I would be interested to check those out. This barely works. I really do not recommend this. Once the temperatures went below 50 degrees, I was very cold in this, and it didn't matter if I had the blanket right on top of me or what. So, um, yeah, again, condensation, terrible with both. Now, pro is that it's windproof. Also, it's waterproof. With a bivy, it's long, but it's not very wide. So for larger individuals, it may not be a good fit. Something else to consider about this stuff is that once you unpack it, you're never going to get a small form factor again. Whew. Stinks. Something about that product smells bad. Yeah, it's a, a really strong, heavy chemical smell. You can see exactly where I slept. <laughs> mm. Yesterday, I hiked about seven miles. So I have seven miles to go to get back to the truck. This has been a great adventure and I hope I showed you how to go about using mylar and also how not to. It is a great material, but it has limits. It's not the magic material that these companies make it out to be. Even though last night was miserable for me, it is good information to put out into the world. There's so many misconceptions and so much marketing gimmick, marketing BS surrounding these survival products. I'm glad to get that information out. I'd love to hear of your thoughts and experiences with Mylar. What do you all think about it? 
I think there's a time and a place for it. It can, without a doubt, save your life in certain situations, certain conditions, but not all. Make sure to sound off in the comment section down below, everybody. What do you all think about this episode? Would you like to see more of these with more survival products? Thank you all very much for joining me for this trip. Thank you for the support. I'm going to huff and puff up this mountain. It's about to get real steep. Everyone, take care, strength and honor. Bye.